All right, so we're here today. We're going to take apart a Remington 1187. This is one of the camp guns we use where I volunteer. It's cleaning things up. Um, first things first, just going to open the bolt, look in, check, right? Totally empty, no ammo. Um, then we'll take the nut off here. Um, on the case, every now and one of these will be too tight. Um, if it is, um, the neatest little thing you can use, a uh, strap wrench. Um, I had these so tight before I couldn't get them off. Strap wrench will keep you from messing up the finish. Uh, all right, so thread that off. Back up. There you go. Pull the hand guard off here, right? Um, with the bolt locked open, here's your bolt carrier, here's your gas piston, and you'll just wiggle the barrel. And... Um, some of them come off real easy. The more you shoot it, the easier it is. I'm going to turn the gun vertical here. Um, put the butt between my feet and just kind of wiggle. And uh, eventually, there it goes. Okay. Um, newer guns are tighter. Older guns are looser. Um, and I want to show you a couple of things. Um, so you've got this O-ring here. This O-ring keeps the gas in. Um, you can see it's been fired. Here's where the fouling goes. So this is where your uh, gas comes in from the barrel here. Okay, and then the piston pushes this thing back, push your carrier back, cycles the action. It's that simple. Um, make sure you put this O-ring back when you're done and make sure um, after a while it'll start to get thin in one spot. Um, it'll get thin on the top. That's where your gas comes in, right there. And so it'll get thin right there so you want to turn it so that there's always a thick spot pointing up there. Okay, so there's that. Um, I want to point out this um, retainer here, right? So this guy here, um, pay attention to how that works. It slides in there, comes up here, and it can't come out. Okay, so it just it comes in where the uh, magazine tube starts, goes all the way up here, and can't come out. Because I'm going to show you 20 gauge in a second. And then here's your gas piston. Um, it's got a flat side. Flat side goes down, and then the thin side, what I like to call the pointy edge, goes up. Okay. Um, for the hardest part, we got to get this handle out. Okay, we got to get the charging handle out. Okay. Um, sometimes they do that, and they just come out with the bolt locked back. On the case that they won't come out with the bolt locked back, I have developed a real simple method: take a pair of curved vice grips. Slide them up under here very gently. Don't squeeze hard, barely put any pressure, and rotate them. And it'll pop that right out. Because sometimes you can pull and pull and pull, and that thing will not come out. Okay, last thing, bolt release on Remington 1187 is right here. Okay, so you hold this to catch the spring tension. Let this thing forward. Okay, notice I'm not going to let it go all the way forward. I'm going to let it go most of the way forward. Okay, now I'm going to try and show you this uh, button here, okay? Inside the action, there's this little bar you can see moving. You have to push that bar in, and if you push that bar in and hold it, voila, the bolt carrier and the bolt will come out. Bolt only goes one way, just like this. Firing pin is here. Breach faces here, okay? Um, and most folks, that's their every time I shoot cleaning. Um, after you get enough rounds down range, at some point this gun is going to start to get a little gritty. Um, things are not going to quite work like they used to. I'll flip the gun over and um, show you this little guy right here, okay? This connecting rod, okay? See this little connecting rod? That's your action spring. It actually goes down into the butt. Every now and then, if you're cleaning one of these, you'll accidentally hit this and you'll knock it forward. And I'm going to do that so you can hear it. And now it will not go back. Like it, it's it's out of place. And the only way to put it back in place is to take the trigger group out. Okay? So if you ever accidentally pull this forward on a Remington 1187, you have no choice but to knock the trigger group out. Also, if you've been shooting your gun for a while, I think Remington recommends every thousand, maybe every five thousand rounds, you do this anyway. Okay, so um, 
here's what I'm going to do. Um, I just take the fore end and stick it under the stock. Okay, so I just stick that under the stock. Um, it works for me. Um, and I take my brass punch and just get these started. So I'm going to tap this one. And we're going to tap this one. That's it. Two pins. Okay. My brass punch happens to be too short. So I'm going to switch to my center pin punch, which is longer. And out she goes. And same thing over here. And out she goes. Okay. So there's your two pins that hold the trigger group in. Fat one and a small one. Um, pretty simple to know which one goes in which hole. Grab the trigger group and pull it out. Okay. You have to wiggle it and jiggle it just so. It'll come out. There's your trigger group. If you ever wanted to see one, there's the hammer on an 1187. Okay, this guy here, that is your bolt release. And so when you press your bolt release, that guy rotates and lets the bolt go. So that's your bolt catch, that's your hammer. Okay, um, and this will get real gritty after a while, and so you want to clean that. All right, so set that to the side. Let's go back to this connecting rod. So this connecting rod right here has to go in that hole. That is your action spring. It actually goes into the butt of the gun. And again, a pair of needle nose, some hemostats, something like that. But you take this connecting rod and you rotate it up. And you get a hold of it. And you just pinch it together. Okay? And once you pinch it together, you place it into that little divot right there. And if you pull it forward, it'll fall out and the only way to get to it is to take the trigger group out. Don't ask me how I know that. It happened to me a couple times, okay? So anyway, um, that's it. Um, you want to take this thing all the way down except for the trigger group every time you clean it because the gas system, this tube here, if you get carbon built up on this, if it's not nice and shiny um, and basically oil-free, so I mean, I put a very light coat of oil on this and wipe it down with a dry cloth. I mean, it's it's really, you want this as oil-free as possible. Um, but if this gets a lot of carbon buildup on it, your piston snags and it will not run, um, which causes the whole gun not to run properly, okay? Um, so you need to clean this every time, clean your barrel every time. Um, and I go ahead and take the bolt out and clean the bolt and the bolt carrier every time. The trigger group, I don't do that every time. Um, and then to put the trigger group back um, is is kind of a little of a fun experiment. You have to wiggle and jiggle, and um, I've, I've not yet found a way that just it fell in every time. You kind of have to play with it and get it to... I've always found it kind of helped to get the front end in first. Um, I'm not really sure why, but it works for me. Um, and a lot of times, like, I'll push, I'll push the bolt catch to give me a little extra room in the action. And then I gotta wiggle this all back and I'm good. Okay, so that's kind of my my tip. Uh, whether it works for you or not, I don't know. Um, and then, I don't know if you still have to do this, but I was always taught if you drive pins out from right to left, you drive them back in from right to left. Um, I don't know if there's any truth to it or if it's just an old wives tale, but and always switch to the plastic part when you get close to your frame um, so you don't mar your frame. Okay, voila, your trigger group's back in, your connecting rod's back in, um, and you'll hear the spring run when I push on this. Okay, you gotta make sure that's not binding. You gotta make sure that's not binding before you put the rest of the shotgun back together. Because if a piece of the trigger group caught onto this, your gun won't work. Okay, so there's that. And then again, um, for your bolt, um, you're going to take this, set it on, set it on here, get it to here. And that same little button I showed you earlier, okay, which is going to be, if I flip this over, 
It's going to be right here. Okay? This little guy right here. Okay? Just inside the right-hand side of the action. You have to push that all the way in and then fidget with the bolt carrier until you can get it to go. And if you don't have that pushed all the way in, and I'm going to stress all the way in, it will not go. Okay? So you get that all the way in, and then you get your bolt carrier to go. And once you get your bolt carrier in most of the way, it'll slide the rest of the way in if you get it to unlock. Okay? Nope. It's stuck. When it sticks, you got to slide it back out and play with it. Um, but it, it's... They're persnickety. There we go. Okay. So you get your bolt the rest of the way in. Now you'll lock this back. You'll put your charging handle back. Um, put your gas piston back. And you're all done. Now, uh, I'm going to set that to the side because I want to show you something else. So, I happen to also have a 20 gauge. So this is the 20 gauge. 1187. Same gun. Same two pins. Same bolt handle. Same pretty much everything. But... Uh, what I want to show you is two different things. So first is the gas piston. Um, the 12 gauge has a one piece piston. The 20 gauge has a three piece piston. Okay, so three pieces. Um, and that one was actually put back upside down. So I'll show you um, how these go. So it's the fun of playing with camp guns that everybody works on. So this piston has three parts. This, this piece here. Okay, and then these two that fit together almost like one. So, um, see this nice conical shape and this nice conical shape, they fit together. And again, just like the 12 gauge, flat side goes on the bottom and the sharp rim points up. And then this guy, the, it has three rings on it. The three rings go on top. So you can get a side view of that. So it kind of, see the way it stacks. Okay, so... Three-piece piston on the 20 gauge. Cool. One other difference for the 20 gauge is right here. Okay, so go here. Okay, this guy right here. So on the 12 gauge, your retainer for your spring goes into your magazine tube, slides all the way. You put your spring in, and you're good to go. This guy is actually a, a press-fit piece of metal. Uh, it's a piece of steel. And to install one of these, you actually have to tap it in with a hammer. Okay, so um, don't really know why they chose to do the 20 gauge different from the 12. But since I had both guns here, I wanted to show you the difference. And the worst thing about the 20 gauge is getting the piston back on right. So again, I'll show you. Flat side goes on first. Okay, so that goes on first. And then the other conical piece goes on. Comb down, knife edge up. And do be careful, these have splits in them. So you see the split here? Okay, see the split in that? And this one also has a split. Make sure that those are 180 degrees away from each other. Otherwise, you get gas leakage. And then this guy goes, like I said, you got three rings. And the edge that's missing a ring goes on first. Okay, so just like that uh, for your 20 gauge. Okay, and then your O-ring goes back. And you can reassemble your 20 gauge. Everything else about your 20 gauge is the same. You got that same little uh, bolt release. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you got that same little piece in here. Let me show you on the 20 gauge to get the bolt out. Right, this guy right here. And it's really, really hard to see it moving there. Okay, it's really, really hard to do. Um, but anyway, so. Um, Everything else is the same, so just kind of wanted to show you that, and uh, I'm going to finish putting this 12 gauge back together and um, get these guns back up, but just kind of wanted to do a video for the 1187. Um, it's a great gun. We use a bunch of them. Um, just going to take them apart and put them back together. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Thanks.